I really like the look of the Model Y. Now, for all my League of Legends fans out there, it does look like a little bit like Tom Kench, which is the catfish character in League of Legends. What's up everyone, this is Ken, also known as Tiho. In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing my 2021 Tesla Model Y after 4,000 miles and six months of ownership. I'll be providing you guys with general stats of the car, dislikes, likes, and repairs I've done thus far. So let's get right into it. As of this recording, I've racked up 4,446 miles on the odometer, 303 watt hours per mile, and 1,347 kilowatt hour. Now 303 watt hours per mile is definitely nothing to be bragging about. It's actually very low efficiency. The only reason why I have such a low efficiency is because of this guy right here. I go to the dog park, which is roughly 10 kilometers round trip, and that just really tanks my efficiency. Let me know in the comments below what kind of efficiency are you guys getting. Now let's get to the nitty gritty, which is the dislikes of my Tesla Model Y. Now, spoiler alert, I really had to dig deep to find these minor issues with the car. I freaking love this car, so let's just get this part over with. So most of my complaints are about the wiper plates, and the first one is the stock wiper plates on the Tesla Model Y and the 3 is really terrible. Here's a clip of me using the wiper blades after a week of owning the car. As you can see, it kind of smears a bit and it doesn't look as clear as even one of my crappier vehicles. Secondly, the auto function on the wiper blades is kind of hit or miss. Sometimes it'd be pouring and it wouldn't turn on and sometimes it, it, there'll be light rain and it just kind of goes full blast. So uh, it's not very consistent, but I'm quite confident they can fix this through a software update. So I've been going on and off of regarding what's the best way to activate the wiper blades and I've came to the conclusion that on the screen it's just not the most effective way. I still stand by my previous video where I propose a software update to access the wiper blades much easier and that's by just clicking the left stock twice. For the Model Y and the Model 3, they currently do not come with mud flaps and I'm not sure what the decision is behind that. On the Tesla store, these cost $40, which is, I say they're okay price and they should just add that price to your purchase if it's really a money thing. The Model Y especially has a wider back. So if you look in the back of there and you don't have any paint protection film or anything, you'll start seeing mud and uh, rocks kind of throw it up and like kind of chipping away at the paint. Luckily, I was fortunate enough to have PPF, so I, that's not a too big of an issue for me. Regardless, I think that Tesla should just include these mud flaps. I think the customer is willing to pay for it. There shouldn't be that many YouTubers making videos, including myself, making videos about opening and closing a frunk. It's like me making a video about opening a jar of peanut butter or something. It's just, it shouldn't be that hard. I think there's two ways of fixing this for Tesla. So Elon, listen up. Elon just has to bite the bullet and just redesign the hood so it just clips on it at one go. Or my next suggestion is just making it automatic itself, just like the rear trunk. Right now, a lot of people use aftermarket items to make their front trunk automatic and that seems to be working just fine. Even though it's a little bit more pricey, I think it just makes the front trunk more usable. Next up, we have the rear window vision and the lack of it. How the Model Y is made, it's very slanted. and I think it looks really great, don't get me wrong, but the disadvantage of having a slanted roof on the back is that you have to have a smaller window. And that smaller window is, I would say, literally useless. Most of the time, I'm just using my rear camera to see what's behind me. And if I'm, you're looking at the rear mirror, because my dog, Neo, is always in the back, I'm just checking up on Neo. That's the only time I'll use that window. Real quick here, if you're liking this video so far, please feel free to boop the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Neo will love you long time. Next issue, it's not a problem specific to the Tesla Model Y, but in fact, for all Tesla owners, anyone that's using their, the Tesla app. And the Tesla app works great when you're connected and all, but if you leave for like 20 minutes, half an hour, and you just open up, back up the app, you'll see this beach ball of death that we call it on in the Mac version, and it can take up to 10 to 20 seconds sometimes. So yeah, you just have to be patient about that. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the things I love about this car. Now, quick disclaimer, I can actually make this video like four hours long talking about what I like about the car, but let's just make it short and sweet. First one I wanna talk about is how fun it is to drive. You just feel like you're in control. The, the speed is just so fast. I have the long range Tesla Model Y 
and it goes from 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, and you can really feel that. I also have the ability to make it faster just via a software update. Although it is $2,000, I'm tempted to just grab it just to test it out for, because you get a 28 4 to 48 hour refund ability. So I might be making a video about that in the near future. And when I say how fun it is, like the instant torque from an EV, if you haven't experienced that, there is no lag once your foot hits the pedal your car just zooms it's just such a good experience to drive it and uh, i can't actually explain it until you, you actually tried it i see acceleration also as a safety feature there are countless times when i'm going onto a highway with my previous vehicles i did not have enough power and it was very sketchy of me merging in but with this car i never lack power even without that software update when i need the power it's there and i can get out of a lot of sticky situations with it Next one is regarding full self-driving and autopilot. I'm not gonna go too far in depth into it. Let's just keep it pretty simple. Obviously, autopilot should be used in highway scenarios and on the freeways, just because it's just going straight. It will just keep you in the lane. And when you, if you have full self-driving, you have automatic lane change, which is, I use it all the time. That's the most popular feature I use on the full self-driving. Obviously, I still check my mirrors and stuff, but it just makes your driving experience that much better. Another feature that I love about full self-driving is chime on green light. Right. Now, don't lie to me, I know everyone has done this. When you parked at a red light, maybe it's this particular long one, you start chatting with your passenger and the light turns green and you're just kind of sitting there and then someone honks at you. I'm sure that's happened to you at least once in your life, but that never happens to me anymore because when the light turns green, the cameras can see that uh, the light is green and then it just goes ding. So that's, that's very helpful. I hope everyone that has a Tesla is using their phone as a key because there's no reason not to. You could use the card, but I don't know why you would. I know there's been reported issues where entering the car, some people say like, oh, the Bluetooth doesn't connect and they, they just kind of have to like fiddle with the app for a while in order for them to unlock the vehicle. But I've never had that happen. I could safely say that. Ease of access, after you get in the vehicle, you have your driver profiles, which is not just for Teslas, I know that, but it's just very easy to not having to push a button to start it or turn a key or anything like that. You go in there, you hit the brakes, everything shifts into your profiles, your mirrors, your steering wheel, your seat, everything just, just goes in place. You hit it to drive and you're good to go. And exactly the same when you're leaving. Once you unbuckle your uh, seatbelt, everything shifts out of place and then you can just step out, close the door, the car locks behind you and you're on your way. Moving on. I have to talk about the storage of, of this car. Perfect use for the front trunk is stuff with a lot of odor, like a hockey equipment, maybe hockey gloves or something. Those things stink. If you don't want to leave odor in your car, you can leave it in the front trunk and that will solve that problem. Also, the rear has a uh, lots of space. I just went came back from a camping trip and I was really surprised at how much storage there was. The lower uh, boot, I guess in England they call it that, but the lower trunk area, that can fill a lot of stuff. I put my test camp back there. There's a upcoming video regarding that. It's a mattress for the Tesla Model Y. Next, I really love the exterior and interior of this car. The minimalist design gives it a very futuristic look and the lack of buttons makes a lot of sense. The vehicles I've had in the past all had a bunch of random buttons I rarely used. Moving on to the outside, I, I really like the look of the Model Y. Now for all my League of Legends fans out there, it does look like a little bit like Tom Kench, which is the catfish character in League of Legends. Yeah, I, I think it looks really good and really clean. And for once, I actually like the feel of a catfish, which is a, the weirdest thing to say out loud, but yeah, I said it. <laughs> Next up, I want to briefly touch on range anxiety, road trips, and everything relating to charging. The ability to charge at home and not go to a gas station anymore is definitely underrated. My typical charge is set to 60 to 75% because that protects the longevity of the battery and is more than enough for my day-to-day -day use. On long trips, I recommend using a site called A Better Route Planner because it makes your planning stress-free. On topic of stress, let's talk about range anxiety. I only really had range anxiety on the first few weeks of during ownership and that's when I really didn't know the car. Now take this next statement with a huge grain of salt as I don't know which weather you're living in and uh, how you guys typically drive. If you are conservative if you're driving and the uh, weather is ideal, you can easily get 275 plus miles in your car. Just don't worry about range anxiety, go out there and have fun, respecting the speed limit of course. All right, I'm gonna cut off the likes just right there just cause I'll, I'll keep babbling on and this video will never end. So I wanna talk about all the maintenance I've done with the car after 4,000 uh, miles. 
Here's a list of what I've done to the car thus far. As you can see, it's very difficult to uh, go to the store and get this windshield wiper fluid and just fill it up. That's, yeah, that, that's it. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. That's, that's all I've done in my 4,000 miles. There's no oil changes or anything. I've only really had two minor issues with the car. First one being sometimes the Bluetooth in my car kind of freezes up when I'm on a call or something, or my Spotify just randomly stops playing. And it's really rare that this happens, but when it does happen, all you have to do is do a software reboot and that's hitting the two scroll wheels. The next one being, I had this weird issue with my car when I was leaving. It was stating that the power was reduced and the front motor temporarily disabled. This only happened once and the solution was very easy. Exiting and re-entering the vehicle just fixed it and I never saw it again. So to conclude this video, I just want to say thank you and I appreciate everyone that's subscribed, like, and comments on my videos. I started this channel about eight months ago and I've gotten, till now I have 1200 subscribers, which is insane to me. I didn't think I would grow that fast. I really greatly appreciate it. Everyone using my referral code and supporting me, I greatly appreciate it. Please leave a comment below what you guys want from me in the future. As you know, I'm passionate about Teslas and everything EV. Tiho out. Thank you.